everyone, it's Missy. We are five weeks after average day to last frost and we have a lot going on outside. I have had a lot of rain this week, so I'm really anxious to get out in the garden and do this video before another shower comes over. So you could take a screenshot of the checklist and let's head out to the garden. All right, starting off with the peas. So this is the Alaska variety. And as you can see, we have some nice pea pods coming here. Um, basically you can harvest these now and use them for cooking, but I'm going to leave mine on the vine and let them ripen fully. Um, now the book calls these snow peas. I call them shell peas, but it's the same thing. Over here, we also have our um, snow pea, the variety um, green arrow, and you can see that there's a lot of flowers, so I'm hoping to get a lot of peas over here. And then we can look at the snap pea variety, and this has also been flowering really nicely too. So here we are at the newest uh, strawberry patch that I've started. Now, when you have new strawberry plants like this, you wanna have two to three runners per plant. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. And you wanna make sure that you're directing the runners into a row or however, whatever configuration that you want. Um, but there's, if there's any extra runners, just take a scissors, snip them off and you should be good. Now I did try mulching these with straw, but we had a lot of wind and the straw kind of blew away. So I'll have to try mulching these guys again later on when the wind dies down, hopefully. This week I'm also starting to harvest my basil. Now, when you want to harvest your basil is in the morning, really early, when the nutrients are still in the leaves. So all I do is take a scissors, clip, and then I just put the leaf in a container and then I use the leaves in salad on top of pizza, etc. But it's also important to clip your basil leaves because that prevents it from flowering so fast. Instead, the plant is going to produce more leaves, which you can harvest a larger crop that way. So that's what I'm doing is I'll be harvesting leaves now until up to the time it flowers. And I'm hopefully going to um, put off the flowering event as I continue to harvest leaves off my plants. Another thing I want to show you that's kind of an experiment I'm doing is I cut this romaine lettuce off last week for harvesting and I left the roots and some of the leaves intact to see if it would regrow and it has. You can see these five little sprouts of romaine that's starting to grow. I was, found this on um, my mom told me about it, that she found it on the internet, and I decided to give it a try, leave the plant in place, and see if I can get more romaine lettuce to develop. So I'm very excited to see that it's starting to regrow, and hopefully I can harvest some more uh, lettuce leaves in the near future. And just kind of giving you an updated garden tour, I have my beans over there. Um, I have a pea plant that was volunteer that I'm just letting grow. That's the flowers that you see and just the pole beans just hanging out. Um, this is my cherry tomato plant and it does have um, blossoms on it as well as some really little green tomatoes. Saw them last night, now I can't find them, but um, I have everything mulched. Of course, you already saw the basil and how I am harvesting the leaves. I have my heirloom tomatoes, which I'm really excited about. Um, the Amish paste are looking really good and I've already started putting on flowers. And then of course you saw the peas in the back. And just to kind of give you a little bit more, I kind of went through it quick last night because we have these rain showers going through. So my Alaska peas are starting to fill out the pea pods and I still have blooms coming, which is really nice. And then these are the green arrow, which I said were blooming. They also had pea pods on them though. And these pea pods are a lot longer than the Alaska. So these ones would have like 10 to 12 peas per pod versus um, I think five to six on the Alaska. Um, and then of course the snap peas over in the back, two rows are blooming nicely. And I do see a few pods starting to show up. So, and then of course with um, snap peas, you wait for the pods to get full if you want to um, pick them to eat whole, whereas the shell peas, snow peas, um, you pick them when they're flat to use whole, so, um, to eat whole otherwise. But I said I was going to wait till the peas filled up. We should be harvesting those next week. Um, 
sweet corn is knee high, which is the perfect time to fertilize with your 10 10 10, which I did. All I did is I took the 10 10 10 granules and sprinkled them in. You can kind of see them on top of the soil surface there. I didn't really have a chance to um, scratch that in, um, but we're hoping that with all the rain that we've had, it will um, kind of bring it down, draw it down into the soil. But uh, one thing that you have to look out for is corn borer. Um, I have not seen corn borer evidence yet, um, but I may <laughs> pretty soon here. Um, and then to, for corn borer, you can use DT. I normally don't do anything with corn borer in my garden, um, but it can also affect the pepper plants too. So be aware of that. Um, over here, I thought this was gonna be parsley. <laughs> it turned out to be cilantro that came up voluntary on its own. So I'm just leaving it grow. It's perfectly fine. And when the seeds come, then I'll have coriander seed again, which is great. Uh, the marigold border is coming along nicely. I think you can now see the border itself and not so much of the little teeny tiny plants with all the weeds. So that will be filling out hopefully very soon and look really nice. I still had the bucket around the melons. So this would be that uh, French cantaloupe that I grew last year. Um, this is like our favorite melon but the plants have really been growing slow so i'm trying to keep that bucket over them to protect them one from the wind and two give them that greenhouse effect so they keep growing that's just a volunteer potato plant that came up because we had potatoes here last year and then this is the acorn squash and because it's vining out and it has the male flowers i did um go and make sure to side dress that with fertilizer so and the bucket's off so it's doing really well i do have some thistles i need to attend to the garden is wet and when i'm walking i am packing the soil in but i'm making sure to stay on a path so i'm not um, completely compacting my whole garden soil in and then i have the cucumbers again they're starting to vine and hopefully they'll start to trellis pretty soon it looks like they're coming along and doing that. And then um, also side dress those when I took the buckets off and um, yeah, they should be good to go. My chive, I need to divide really, really bad. The rain has just flattened it. And then of course I have my two pots of mint over there as well. And then I have my rosemary, my thyme, my little parsley plant. If you had a bigger parsley plant, you could be harvesting the leaves. Um, this week, you want to make sure that you harvest the outer stems because the inner is a crown and you don't want to um, cut that out, otherwise your plant is done growing. And then I have my beets, which they have been windblown like crazy, even though I have a tarp. Um, but this, not so much over on this side. This side was pretty much protected. But if you go down, you can look and see that those plants are smaller at the far end and that's because they were wind blown. So it just goes to show how much when you protect your garden, how much bigger and healthier the plants can look. And it was the same for the strawberries. I have the net or the tarp over them. They are a lot bigger and healthier and the strawberries are bigger and juicier on this end than they were where they were not protected from the wind. So that was just kind of a lesson learned for us there. Um, I picked up another blueberry plant, which is this one right here. It's North Country. So the one in front of me is Patriot. This is North Country. This is North Blue, which looks really, really sick. And I don't know why. We put some more peat moss in there. We're doing a soil test to see if this needs to be fully repotted. And the one over here should be superior. Let me look. Yep, superior. So that's just um, kind of our little blueberry patch there. And then my dill is coming along nicely. So I should have plenty, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, when we are, have time to can our pickles. Um, I have black swallowtail, eastern black swallowtail butterflies in my area. So when the caterpillars come, they really feast heavily on our dill patch each year. And then of course you saw the cabbage and the romaine lettuce and the potatoes. These are the fingerling 
potatoes, they are doing wonderful. Uh, the Yukon Gold, not so much. And again, the wind was so strong on this garden, on this side of the garden, that you can see that the potato plants are starting to like die away because of the wind. Um, so I'm not expecting too many potatoes in that side versus this side, but that's just the way it goes. And then of course I had the onions mulch and they, the mulch has really made them do well. Um, have the peppers and the celery and my other peppers with the wobble waters. Um, we put these over after they had kind of gotten windblown, so that's why you see the brown on the sides of their leaves. But I see new leaves are coming and they're looking a lot healthier. Yes, they look a lot better. That was that was pretty bad, that wind. We had um, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds with up to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. So that was a lot. Um, I need to take the net off and show you guys this. So I went and picked the bunching lettuce and the bib lettuce bolted. So I never got a chance to eat this, but this is my head lettuce, which is iceberg. And it is forming a nice head. There's a lot of dirt in there though from the rain. Um, we did mulch around there, but I think the wind got under the net and blew a lot of the mulch away. But in this bare spot, I am going to be planting more lettuce and radishes, so let's do that. All right, it is really wet and muddy, but what I'm doing is I am just stirring up the soil as best I can to hopefully get some weeds out of the way and make it so that way the seed can go in the ground more evenly. And last year we had rain practically every day which is not really normal for our area. And yeah, it's just trying to get out here even when it's muddy and get more stuff planted, I guess. There we go. So that looks like a nice, even kind of thing. So I got my radish seed right here. And you can plant, like you could have planted bush beans, you could have planted summer squash, you could plant carrots spinach, what have you. And actually, I hardly have any seeds left. I'm gonna have to get another pack. But all I do is just plant them out, spacing them apart, and then I'll just cover them with um, a little bit of soil. They don't need to be covered much. And then I'll just come in and water them. There we go. And then that will be this patch. And then I had my bib lettuce over there that bolted. And I'll just put some more lettuce over there. And that will be it for this week. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.